Welcome everybody to Big Monday. From the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut, you're watching the American Conference on ESPN. The Connecticut Huskies enter the evening with the second longest home court win streak in NCAA history at 89 straight. They beat South Carolina all seven times they've ever met. They get another crack at the Gamecocks tonight. And the longest home court win streak in the country is on the line tonight. Nafisa Collier gets set to Tip it up with Makia Herbert Harrigan, and the Gamecocks win the tip. In and Alexis Jennings, South Carolina has, I think, an advantage with Megan Walker guarding whichever player does, and you see the piece of Collier with a nice aggressive take. There's Collier, and she's got the first four for UConn, squaring off again. Good cut by Samuelson, and she ties the game. Collier into the paint. Collier maneuvering against Jennings. What a move. South Carolina offense. Not to say better or worse than last year, but it was very Asia Wilson dependent. All conference and certainly all American level right now. Walker's open. And connects on the three. Previous three shots. Samuelson off the screen buries it. A freak and tie it for UConn after they trailed by 10 in the first. Collier in. She'll have a chance to tie it at the line. Of the year in Asia Wilson to the greats at their respective programs all time. Beautiful feed by Dangerfield to Williams. Last foul, they actually did put it on Henderson, not on Perry. Oh, they left Dangerfield open. And she gives UConn its first lead of the night. And here comes Samuelson. Pulls up and connects. Both teams have answered with run after run. Gamecocks have scored the last nine. Good cut by Samuelson and good patience to wait for the flyby. This past weekend, she just passed Diana Taurasi for seventh most points in school history. Walker knocks down a three and it's a one point game. Team I've seen, that's the best performance I've seen this season from any team. Totally understandable. Collier with the shot clock winding down as cool as it gets. They're doing it with a much deeper lineup. Williams got it to Collier, who draws the foul. They're getting a stop. But an eight-second difference, shot and game clock. Dangerfield using the other hand, getting to the rim. Rebound with Cooper hitting the deck. Collier can't get the roll. Williams is there for the offensive rebound. Some activity from the freshman. Lead back to one for UConn. Good action with Samuelson and Collier. They're, either of them can make you pay. 266 combined games for Samuelson and Collier. Here's one of those seniors. Cooper did just head to the scorer's table for South Carolina. Samuelson hits the jumper. First point from anyone on either bench tonight. That is correct. Quavos Moore came into this game with 10 assists on the season. She already has three tonight. Wow. Herbert Harrigan, good look, but short. Looking for a double-digit lead, it's Samuelson with the land. Be not as big of a factor this time around. Strength of schedule, Charlie Cream wrote this past week, usually the biggest deciding factor for a lot of the matchups we see. Is, I think Williams probably fits into that category as well. Needs big minutes right now so that it matters most in March. Another connection between the seniors to give UConn its largest lead. And cash in here. Oh, Dangerfield read that from the start. Behind the back to Samuelson, what a play, and a foul. I don't know if they're gonna count the basket because the foul might have been on the Dangerfield contact here. Let's see if we can sort this out. I think they called it a block. After the basket. After the basket, so they'll count the basket and then and then two free throws. And then the, oh my goodness! Yeah, because it's bonus time. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So there's the foul on Cooper. Samuelson's basket's going to count, according to my Forsberg. I think that's the best way to guard it is to switch it, which is what South Carolina did on that play. And then UConn goes to the other side of the floor. State 
upcoming at home before the SEC tournament begins. So some serious opportunity to bolster their resume, too. They played Mississippi State very well in their first matchup. Yep. Williams gets the roll. Just four starters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... it's and, and to, to be able to, to rebound from, from losing those players. The first two rounds of the tournament because Colonial Life Arena in Columbia is hosting the men's tournament opening rounds that weekend as well as Jeff. Jeff's not a celebrity. Here's Collier. Boy, it's been a final season. Convinced by Don Staley to stay. 89 straight home wins. It's the second longest streak in NCAA history. More to go. We still have a gap to close here uh, if we want to be a team that, that gets to Tampa in the Final Four. But a lot to build on. You know, Don Staley saying earlier today as Peter was saying this against the three, where they absolutely performed well. Samuelson knocked it free. Dangerfield got it to Williams. And here comes the freshman with a nice move in the air. Called the game there. Neither have I. We're going to go to Gill next week. Check out that Civil War matchup. They're going to they're have played three days prior on Friday. So it'll be fresh in their minds as Collier gets the offensive rebound. So those are two teams next week that could meet up in the Elite Eight out in Portland. Collier again. Second half explosion. They trailed. Beg your pardon. Led by one at halftime. Gino Ariema and Don Staley, the great friends and colleagues, meet at half court after UConn puts together a 29 point third and a 24 point fourth quarter. They win it 97 to 79.